I like that I'm following the bicycle. This is good. <clears throat> A cognitive switch was flipped, and then we realized that we could use things to help us get things more quickly and more easily under our control. I don't really know when this happened. Maybe we were lying in our cave one night, and we were thirsty, and we wanted some water down from the stream without actually having to go down to the stream and get it. And we thought, man, I sure would like some of that water. So the next day, we went down to the stream, and we got a coconut shell, and we filled it up with water, and we took it back to the cave. And that night, we were not thirsty. And from this, part of the agricultural revolution. Not only did we realize we could use things to get things, we could use things to get away from things. And this is where the fun begins. Really because up until that point, we could only move our bodies at a rate that our own flesh and bone could provide. Most recently, <clears throat> Usain Bolt maxed out our top speed on land. Michael Phelps maxed out our top speed in the water. And in the air, gravity's kind of still our max. <laughs> but when we use things to help us along, that's when the fun happens. But it's also when these unknown consequences tend to arise. We're not talking just about injuries. We're talking about the way we experience our lived world. We first started using the horse in maybe 4,000 BC to accelerate. 800 BC, we added a saddle and a stirrup to it, and continents were conquered. Add the plow, agriculture booms. And we still refer to our modes of transportation in terms of horsepower. When you look at that for war, in the early days, if you wanted to kill somebody, it took a long time, and it's kind of difficult use things to help you along, and it's a little bit easier. You could even send something else to do it for you. If we wanted to navigate the air, first we had to navigate the water. And to break our water barrier, we first started using wood. And then we accelerated with the power of the wind, and oceans were conquered. And we used these beautiful tall ships to speed across the globe. And the fun really hasn't stopped. Um, we use precise calculations and formulas and mathematics to really zone in on things. And now we're able to go faster than the speed of sound. And the fun hasn't stopped. We use fire. The internal combustion engine was used. 1997, a guy named Andy Green set the land speed record. And now his new goal is 1,000 miles per hour. We want to go faster. We want to see him go faster. I was riding my motorcycle one day to see a girl. It was about 40 miles. I did it in about 20 minutes. I ran out of gas about a mile short from the gas station. I had to push. She got mad that I didn't call her to come help. And I thought, my ancestors may have taken a week to do this. And you're mad at me for pushing my bike? Here in Bend, Oregon, we like to go down hills fast with planks of wood strapped to our feet. But we got to get up the hill first. And we can walk about a mile an hour. Or we can sit on a chair and go uphill 11 miles an hour, 1,000 feet a minute, 5 meters per second, sitting on a chair. To get down the hill, look at all the fun things we get to use to really tweak and max our speed. I like the Darth Vader helmet there, the little Lycra suit, and the little cool handlebar things that tuck down there. It's kind of nice. <laughs> To get away from the physicality of it, we can even talk faster than ourselves. We wanted to tell somebody something back in the day, we'd etch it on the cave wall. And then we started writing it down on paper and putting it in a letter and sending it away by a pony or a pigeon. And now, we're broadcasting live over the internet to everybody right now. We can heal faster than ourselves. Time was, if we were sick, drink some water, sleep it off. Now, throw a Band-Aid on it, mush this up and eat it, summon the spirits, go to the doctor, take these pills. We'll have you up and running in no time. But you know, from that first moment of that switch being flipped and realizing we can do this, we didn't foresee all these things. Maybe we just wanted water. We just wanted to get away from the saber tooth. In a way, we're still at that moment. But what's going to come next? When the flying car is going to finally show up here. I got a meeting in Hong Kong in a half hour. I'm going to be late. Are we really speeding towards a more perfect future? Or is somebody going to find a way to make their horse go a little bit faster than ours? Or maybe just a way to slow our horse down a little bit? What then? We've got to rethink our next move. But whichever style of speed we decide to set our sights on, 
Let's not forget about old speed. Speed that was discovered thousands of years ago. Speed that was perfected over the winds of time. Speed that spills the sea up over the bow, spraying its salt in our hair and stealing the wind from our lips. There are still ships out there that can reach us, that can get us to these speeds. We simply have to put down the nation's fastest 4G network and take a walk down the dock and find a tall ship and step on board using our own two feet.